This is section 6.2 of um, the statistical distributions chapter, and this is the binomial distribution. And uh, let me try and explain what the binomial distribution is and, and, and why you might use it. Let's say I had five coins. So here's my five coins, one, two, three, four, five. And let's say that the probability of getting heads on any particular coin, these are bias coins, is 0.3. And the probability of getting tails, then that would be 0.7. And let's say I want to work out the probability, probability of getting um, exactly two tails okay so i want two of them to come up tails so it might be that uh this one and this one come up tails or it could be that uh this one and this one come up tails yeah there's lots of different ways that the tails could come up but i know that basically if i want two tails the probability of getting that is going to be uh, 0.7 squared, yeah, because I want two tails. But if I'm going to get two tails, I actually at the same time need to make sure that I get three heads. So 0.3 cubed. Okay, so two of the things that I want, three of the things that I don't want because there are five things happening, but I need to know. How many different ways can that happen? How can I work out the number of ways that I can get two heads and, sorry, two tails and three heads? Well, I could count them. I could just write heads, 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 tail, tail. Okay, I could count them. So I could go through and then uh, change the tail to a different position. So I've got one there. Here's another one, so it might be heads, heads, tails, heads, tails. Yeah, I could count them. That's tedious. What if there were 10 coins? That would take me ages. There is a quicker way. We've got a button on our calculator will tell us the number of ways. And that button is labeled as NCR. And you'll get that button by doing shift and then doing the divide button. You'll see NCR there. And that basically just tells you the number of ways that you can do this. Now, in the book, they also use this notation, NR. Now, what do we type in? Well, N is going to be the number of basic, like the coins, we've got five. And we want two of them to be tails. So we will type in five C, I mean, it, uh, sorry, five, c2 actually means five choose two you could think of it as if i've got five options or five coins what's the what's the number of ways that i can choose two out of five now if we type this into my calculator five c2 you'll get 10. so it's telling me there's 10 different ways of getting two of the things that i want out of five so i would then change this to five here and i'd calculate that so let's maybe work that out and see what we get so not five sorry ten we said it was ten so let's do ten times by um 0.7 squared times by 0.3 cubed and we get um, 0 0.1323, 0.1323. So basically what that means is about a 13.23% chance um, or probability of basically like flipping five coins and two of them coming up tails. Now we need some mathematical notation to write this so we use the um, probability mass function 
which we talked about in the previous section. So what is it? So the probability of getting a certain number of successes. So R here represents the number of successes. In other words, the number of things that I want. In my case, it was two. I wanted two tails. So the number of successes. And that's equal to, now they've used NR. I'm going to write NCR. So N stands for what we call the number of trials, the number of things that were done. In our case, it was five because there were five coins. So number of trials, that's what R stands for, number of trials. And then we multiply that by, this is the probability of success. Probability of success. In our case, it was 0 0.7. That's the thing that we wanted. And how many times did we want it? We wanted it R times. That's the number of successes. And then we've got to multiply it by the number of things we don't want to happen at the same time. So the probability of failure, and that's n minus r. So that's the number of like coins, if you like. Take away the number of successes gives you the number of failures. So you could think of this formula as being the number of ways times uh, the probability of success times the probability of failure. All right, let's have a look at it in practice. The random variable uh, x, so this is our notation. We know we're doing a binomial distribution when it's written like this. And the two numbers in the brackets, one is gonna represent the number of trials, number of trials. So the number of times this thing is happening, like five coins, things like that. And P stands for the probability of success, probability of success. So this is the notation that we use. So for the example that we did before with the coins, this would have looked like this. This would have been five because there were five coins. And the probability of success would have been that. And I worked out. What was the probability of getting two successes? In other words, getting two heads where X stood for the number of heads. Yeah, so that's basically the notation for the example that we did before. That's what it would have looked like. OK, so let's do this then. Um, so part A is saying I want like my example, two successes. Right now, you could think of this as saying, right, I've got 12 coins and I want two successes. This is the number of ways I can get two successes or two tails out of 12 coins. Now, what do I want to happen? Well, to get that coin, to get that tail in this question is a six. How many times do I want to get a six? Well, two times. So that means the other 10 coins I don't want to get it. OK, now we could just use the formula um, where N would be 12, R is 2 and then P is a 6. But it it makes more sense if you can actually think of it um, in terms of like working like that. So even if you are not sure about the formula, you know what it means. So let's do 12 C shift divide 2, then times that by uh, 1 6, which we'll need to put in brackets to square it, and then times that by uh, brackets again, 5 over 6. And this will be to the power 10. OK, and then like these types of answers, we tend to give to 4 decimal places these probability answers so I get 0 0.2961 to four decimal places okay part b the probability basically that I get nine tails okay so 
I'm, I'm flipping 12 coins and I want nine of them to be tails, which means that I want nine successes. I want nine tails. So if there's 12 coins, then it means the other three coins need to be heads. So you could think of it like that. Again, we can use the formula. N would be 12. Again, R would be nine because we want nine things to happen. And P would be um, a six again. So again, we could just use the formula and put those things in. So if we work that out, so 12 C9, 12 C9 times by a six uh, to the power nine times by five six cubed now we get a really tiny probability here so if i just did four decimal places i just get 0 point naught 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 so actually i'm going to go on one two three four and one two six so this is like three significant figures i suppose i could go to four significant figures but it's very low very low that one very small probability and in part C, I want to find a probability that um, I get less than or up to one. You can think of it like tail. Now, that actually means that I either get no tails or I get one tail. So it means adding two different answers together. So to get no 12s, it's going to be 12C0, which means that I actually want no tails which means that I get 12 heads. I'm not sure why I put 5 over 16. Let's get rid of 1. And then I need to add to that um, probability of getting one tail. I'm just using heads and tails. not really about heads and tails, but I'm just making it up so that we, we get to make some sense. So I want uh, one tail which means that the other 11 are going to be heads or whatever it is. So that I'm going to work out my calculator. And to four decimal places, as I said, these probability problems, you normally go to four decimal places. Uh, 0.3813 is the probability of that happening. Right, OK. Let's have a look at this question. The probability a randomly chosen member of a reading group left-handed is 0.15. I'm left-handed, so I'm in a minority. A random sample of 20 members of a group is taken. Suggest a suitable model for the random variable x, the number of members in the group who are left-handed. Justify your choice. OK, so we're going to write down that, yes, we can use a binomial distribution. Um, because we've got a sample of 20 members and the probability of them being left-handed is 0 0.15. Now, when it says justify our choice, the binomial distribution, I suppose I should have said this at the start, um, we can use when there are, and I'll write them over here, there are a fixed number of trials yeah so we're picking 20 people it doesn't change we're not picking people until we've picked a left-handed person then then we stop when we found a left-handed person because that could be the first person you might find is is left-handed or the the 100th person or the 17th person that's not a fixed number of trials but here it's a sample of 20 so there's a fixed number of trials we call these trials each the thing that or uh, like a sample it's a fixed number of trials or we could say like a fixed sample size that's the first thing the other thing is that the probability um, probability of success in this case being left-handed being left-handed like me is 
independent. So the probability that one person is left handed doesn't affect anybody else. Yeah. So we can use this binomial distribution when there's a fixed number of trials, n, and when the probability of success um, is independent, and also when that probability of success is fixed. So it's not 0.15 for the first student and then a different probability for a second student. So this, the, the third reason is that the probability of success, in this case being left-handed, being left-handed like me, is constant doesn't change it's constant yeah so when there's a fixed number of trials the probability of success is independent and the probability of being success is constant then that justifies our use of the binomial distribution okay so that's part a part b says use your model to calculate the probability that right let's do that so part b um First bit is exactly seven, seven members of the sample are left-handed, right? So this will be working out this, the probability that exactly seven are left-handed, right? Now, so if exactly seven are left-handed, out of my 20, I want success for seven. What's the probability of being left-handed? 0.15. So I want seven of them to be left-handed, which means that the other 13 must be right-handed yeah and the 20 c7 just tells us the number of ways of getting sevens left-handed people out of 20 so we'll do that 20 c7 times by um, 0.15 to the power 7 times by 0.85 which is probably probability being right-handed is 0.85 to the power 13 so we'll give our answer to four decimal places and we'll get uh, 0 0.0160 okay that's the probability of finding seven left-handed people in a group of 20 about 1.6 percent quite low and then the second bit is fewer than two members of the sample are left-handed so you'd write it like this so fewer than two, not equaling two. Now, how can we find that? What's well, the probability that none are or one is? So we've got two sets of probabilities to add together. So no left-handed people. Well, if there are no left-handed people out of my 20, how many ways are there picking no uh, left-handed people? There's actually only one. And we could actually write, uh, we don't actually need to write this down. Yeah, because all of this is one. You could just say, well, if there's no left-handed people, they're all right-handed. So you could just write that. So that's the probability that there's no left-handed people. But we need to add to that a probability of finding one left-handed person. Which means that the other 19 are right-handed. So we'll work that out and see what answer we get. And typing all of that in, I get four decimal places, 0 0.17, and it goes 555, five, five, so it'd be 5, 6. That's the probability of less than two people in a group, about 17.56% chance of that happening. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 6B on pages 90 to 91. So just remember our uh, formula here for working out um, if it's a binomial distribution with a fixed number of trials and the probability of success. So N is the number of trials or the number in our sample. So you can think of it as the number in the sample. P is the probability of success, the probability of getting the thing that we want, 
liquidity or the success. And the way that we're going to work this out is use NCR times by probability of success R times and then the probability of failure N minus R times and R is the number of successes. So it might be the number of left-handed people, uh, the number of tails. It all depends on the question.